Today on the Joseph Carlson Show, I've made some changes. I recently sold 100% of one of my holdings and I've used all of the proceeds of that sale to buy into a brand new position. Now I'm not gonna hold you in suspense. The company that I sold is Canadian Pacific. I sold out of the entire position and I did so to buy Google. I bought $27,000 of Google in the passive income portfolio. Now you may point out that Google's up 6% today. Is it really a good idea to buy a company after it just went up in price? Well, I actually didn't make this trade today. I did it on the 28th, which was Monday. Monday, of course, was a day before Google's earnings. So I purchased $27,000 of Google stock one day before earnings. Over just yesterday and today with Google's earnings report, the stock is up around 7%. So I'm already around $2,000 in the green on this holding that I've held for two days. This has been a great start to the Google position in the passive income portfolio. But if you're new to Google and you're just investing in this company for the first time, Luckily for you, I think there's more to go. Investors today still don't fully appreciate what Google did. I'll be going over why I believe Google today is worth well above $200 per share. We'll be going through the facts of this report, the reality of the situation, and what's gonna be driving Google stock above $200 per share. Now, before diving into the details of this latest earnings report, I think it's good to start off with my recent trade into Google because this was more of an abrupt decision than my typical trades. Like I said, two days ago on Monday, I made one of the most significant trades I've done in the entire year of 2024. I sold entirely out of my position, Canadian Pacific, and I purchased $27,000 of those proceeds into Google. If you've been a follower of this channel for some time, this shouldn't come as a surprise. I've been talking about selling Canadian Pacific for months. So this is something that I've talked about, I said I was gonna do, and I finally did. Now, just a couple thoughts on Canadian Pacific. First of all, I don't buy bad companies, and Canadian Pacific is no different. This company is a really, really good company. It is a class one railroad that spans all across North America. Nothing is going to be able to disrupt this company for a long period of time. So I'm not selling Canadian Pacific because it suddenly turned into a bad company. That's not the case here. I sold Canadian Pacific because of opportunity cost. I have a limited amount of capital to work with, and every dollar that I've invested, I feel like should be working the hardest for me as possible. I want every dollar of this portfolio to be working and compounding as fast as I can make it. And frankly, when I looked over my portfolio over and over again, I thought I had better growth prospects than Canadian Pacific. So I sold this company simply because I can outperform it with other holdings that I choose. Now, selling is a tough decision, and when I decided to do that, I needed to find a place to put the money. And the problem was, is that most of the companies in my portfolio are not in any kind of dip. In fact, most of them are surging upwards. I would have loved to buy more Salesforce, but the company's not in a dip anymore. It's now $5,000 in the green. The stock price is now up to $300 per share. And throughout the year, it traded at much cheaper prices, which is where I was buying it. So Salesforce has now closed that gap. Booking Holdings, another company that I'm very bullish on, that I purchased a lot of earlier this year, it's grown a lot. I'm up 24% on this position, up $10,000. Booking Holdings went through a temporary dip that was an entry point into this stock. I was buying the company right around here, $3,300 per share. And over just the past three months, the company surged from $3,300 up to $4,300. So the stock price is up $1,000 per share. At this point, I'd rather just hold my position than buy more. There's other options like Texas Roadhouse, but frankly, this company's grown to a point where it's now so big, it's one of the largest companies in my portfolio. An $85,000 position with $50,000 of that being gains. Do I really wanna add more to the restaurant chain when it's grown to my third largest position? I don't think so. I just don't feel good about adding to it when it's going through this much momentum and positive sentiment. The situation I'm in currently is having a lot of great companies trading at not so great prices. Companies are no longer at a deal. The situation of finding easy buys in the market is getting more and more difficult as prices are going up and they're going up quickly. I was looking at my watch list, trying to get creative, looking at other potential companies like DoorDash. This is one that's seen astronomical growth that has huge network effects. But again, it's up 50% in just the past three months and I don't feel like chasing stocks. Uber is another great option, but I'm always concerned with Uber, the threat of Waymo or Tesla's robo-taxi. And likewise, Uber's recently through a price surge. Uber for me is a no-go right now as well. After looking around for a while of where to put this capital, I kept coming back to Google. 
This is a company that I believed at the time had by far the best risk and reward. Google stock is currently up around 30% year to date, but just two days ago, it was only up 17%. Google stock was trading at a 19 Ford PE ratio. That seemed rather cheap for a company of Google stature. The valuation was so low on this company and the reason was very clear. Investors have become increasingly concerned about the Department of Justice lawsuit against Google, the potential for a breakup, and the concerns of Google losing their search market share to competitors like Perplexity, like OpenAI with Bing, and other AI search engines. Many intelligent investors have been sounding the alarm for Google for a while. Brad Gerstner 10 months ago said that Google won't be able to replicate the search dominance in AI. In the appearance on CNBC, he infused further fears about Google, stating how they're in a position to lose a lot of market share. With other investors sounding similar alarms, we've seen Google stock trail behind the S&P 500. The company seemed like it was getting a bid earlier this year, only to fall back down, going all the way back down to only 17% returns on the year, while at the same time growing earnings per share at 30% while at the same time trading at a lower P.E. ratio than the S&P 500. The stock price for Google felt very depressed, and it still does. So when looking at the depressed share price of Google and the valuation compared against the rest of the market, I viewed this as an asymmetric bet, meaning that it had far more upside than it had downside. The risk and reward was heavily skewed towards the upside, and that is because I believe strongly that investors are overemphasizing the fares in Google and not emphasizing enough the qualities of this company. On Monday morning, I posted on my Discord that I was making this trade, and I'll read you a little bit of the post. I said that I sold my entire Canadian Pacific position to start a new position in Google in the passive income account. Google is not a perfect company, but I view the risk right now with Google as heavily skewed, with low downside and ample upside. Now, I did say that on a private Discord on Monday, but I also made it very clear publicly in my YouTube video on Monday that I was bullish going into these earnings. In a video on Monday, I said this, and I have to believe that eventually the fares will fade with Google. The Department of Justice and the scary headlines about them breaking up Google will be a thing of the past. Meanwhile, Google will continue to grow their earnings and their revenue. And right now, frankly, the valuation is very forgiving. Google doesn't have to be perfect. They just have to keep growing at all. If the company remains at the exact same multiple, but they continue to grow, 10 to 15% earnings per share per year, you're still getting a very attractive return at this point. So aside from the fact I think the company's undervalued, I think Google should be over $200 today. I think even so, even if it's undervalued and it remains undervalued, it will still be an attractive return profile from here. That's what I said on Monday. I feel like I couldn't have made it any clearer that I was bullish on the company. After all, I'm not gonna come right out and say you should buy a company. I give my opinion on things and you can make your own decisions. So that's the story of me buying the stock and making this change in my portfolio. Now, if you're looking at Google today and you believe you've missed the train, that it's already left the station, I don't believe that's the case. I believe there's evidence that there's a lot more room to run for Google. Let's first start off with just valuation. It is true that Google's up $10 or plus 5.5% on the day, and it was up a little bit yesterday. So Google's on a good run. The stock price has surged over the past few days. That can, of course, dissuade you from buying a company. But if we look at the valuation of Google stock, it still remains very low. Right now, the Ford PE ratio based on some estimates is around a 19 forward PE. Many analysts believe that Google will do around $8.70 of earnings in 2025. Based on a $180 stock price, that puts the current Ford PE at 20. So Google, even today, even after the surge upwards, is still trading below the S&P 500, below Meta, below Microsoft, below Apple, below all the rest of them. It's one of the cheaper companies in the market even after this report. Google did a lot of great things in this report. We can start off with the revenue. Alphabet increased revenues 15% or 16% in a constant currency basis. So this is what the overall revenue growth looks like on the longer term. 15% growth overall looks very healthy for a company like this. When we break it down by segment, this is again what it looks like. 15% revenue growth overall. Google services increased by 13%, led by strength across Google search and other Google subscriptions, platforms and devices, and YouTube ads. One of the biggest things we've heard about Google is how they're losing market share in search, how things are going downhill, as Bing, OpenAI, Perplexity are all taking Google's search business. 
and we should be very, very scared as investors. But again, we have another quarter of looking at just Google search and seeing strong revenue growth, revenue growth of above 10%. That's not the sign of a weak business. That's not the sign of a company that's suffering from competitive forces. On the earnings call, Sundar Pichai talked at length about YouTube, saying that it's getting more watch time on the TV, pitting it directly against streaming services like Netflix. And they're focusing on the TV experience, making it feel more premium, making it feel better to navigate on the television. So YouTube is now expanding from use primarily on desktops and phones onto the TV. The growth path seems very long for YouTube. So we had revenue growth that beat analyst estimates by a couple billion dollars, and we have their earnings per share reported as $2.12. If we look at the Qualtrum Earnings Week calendar, we can take a look at this earnings per share beat. We have it right here. This was the earnings per share that they recorded this quarter, $2.12. Now, if we take a look at what the analysts were estimating this quarter, it was $1.85. That is a significant beat. They beat the earnings per share by a 15% margin. And again, if we look at the revenue, they also beat analyst estimates by a wide margin. The 88.2 billion, if we look at the estimate, it was 86.39. Right away, just these top and bottom line numbers in and of themselves should prove the doubters wrong. Google is still growing at a very fast pace, faster than what the analysts are expecting, faster than what's being priced into the stock with its current valuation. But it doesn't end here. Sundar Pichai on the earnings report and in the call talked at length about AI and how it's helping their business. He says the AI features are expanding what people can search for and how they can search for it. In cloud, our AI solutions are helping drive deeper product adoption with existing customers, attract new customers and win larger deals. And YouTube's total ads and subscription revenue surpassed 50 billion over the past four quarters for the first time. We generated strong revenue in the quarter and our ongoing effort to improve efficiency helped deliver improved margins. Sundar is attacking the problems on every front. First of all, starting with AI. He notes that the AI business and their search is not being hurt. In fact, it's helping expand their features. He mentions in the call that AI is also helping Google internally. For example, 25% of the code at Google is being written by AI. So Google's seeing a huge internal productivity boost by artificial intelligence just in writing code. AI is helping them with their cloud effort and you can see it show up in the numbers. Google Cloud blew past estimates from $8.4 billion in the most recent quarter of the previous year to $11.35 billion this quarter of this year. That is massive growth in cloud. If we give this some context, we can filter out the other revenue segments and just look at Google Cloud. They grew up by 35%. Now again, if we erase this quarter and we went back to the previous quarter, it was growing at 27%. So Google Cloud growth accelerated dramatically. 35% revenue growth in cloud is wild. And the more astonishing thing is that even though the revenue is accelerating in cloud, so are the margins. The most recent quarter, the operating margins for Google Cloud were 17%. That is a very large jump from the quarter before it at 11%. And there's still room for improvement on both fronts. Google Cloud will continue to grow revenue and continue to increase margins. Over time, this will become a substantial portion of Google's operating income. Now, another thing that Sundar Pichai mentioned that's easy to overlook is the improved efficiency. He talked about that a number of times on the earnings call as well, saying that they are working close to look at the structure of Google and make sure the company is running as efficient as possible. And this time he really means it. One of the ways to look at a company running efficiently is if they're growing their revenue rapidly, if they're growing their margins while keeping the number of employees flat. And Google is doing that. The number of employees last year at the same quarter were 182,000. The number of employees this quarter were 181,000. Meaning that as they're growing the revenue 15%, they have an overall reduction in employees. If anything, right now, they're keeping the number of employees relatively flat while gaining revenue. And there you see increased efficiency. So in summary, right now, Google search is strong and still growing. YouTube has a dominant moat and is still growing. Google cloud growth is accelerating while margins are expanding. Google's earnings per share are increasing rapidly, above 35% year over year. Google's buying back billions of dollars worth of shares every quarter, reducing the total share count by 2% year over year. Google's also paying billions of dollars a year in the form of a dividend that will grow every year. Google's moderating their expenses in research and development, general and administrative, 
sales and marketing, every portion of the company is being more careful and moderating their cost over time. And right now, even after the company's given this report, even today it still trades at a 19 or 24 PE ratio. Google stock is headed in the right direction, but it's still not appropriately priced, and it should be worth more today. So what is it gonna take for Google to get above $200 per share? What will we have to see from the analysts? I've seen analysts go on to CNBC and become increasingly bullish on this company as they continue to report quarter after quarter. Gene Munster is one that's overall positive on Google. And the reason is that uh, 10, seven, 10 years ago, there was a lot of debate about how mobile was gonna impact the business. And of course, that's been the narrative around Google for the last year, is how is uh, AI gonna impact the business? And what we saw in their US business, uh, that is where the AI overviews saw the first full quarter. Uh, the expectations were that it was gonna grow at 12%, it grew at 19%. And I think that uh, this is the first evidence and the call has just been a chorus of commentary about how AI overviews is having a positive impact on the business. Now we're not out of the woods yet, Google investors, but I think that this is a most encouraging data point after a lot of hand wringing over the last several quarters. Gene is correct. There's been so much concern about this search business and no matter what Google says, no matter what the numbers say, investors are still concerned about this business. But if the search business keeps growing and the naysayers are eventually proven wrong, which they will be, Google's gonna be a good bet from here. Now, one thing that Google did talk about in their earnings call is their other bet segment. That is where they fund different, more experimental projects, the main one being Waymo. And they mentioned that Waymo is by far the most advanced autonomous network that's actively taking fares for rides today. Waymo is now completing over 150,000 rides per week. Gene was asked about the remarks on Waymo as well. Well, the reason why it doesn't get credit is that it's just such a small part of the business. We were doing some of the numbers on it today. It's They're doing about 30 million. They didn't report this, but you can back into it, about 30 million a year in revenue. So it's, uh, it's like a speck uh, of revenue. And if it grows a lot, it's still gonna be relatively small. And so I think this probably ends up better as a standalone company and uh, where uh, investors, uh, Google investors may benefit five or 10% from Waymo. Gene downplays the impact of Waymo, saying that it's basically just a speck of revenue, it's not that important, and it's probably better for it to end up as a standalone company. And he couldn't be more wrong on this subject. First of all, Waymo is growing rapidly. They went from 100,000 rides per week now to 150,000. Why would Google want to sell off their most promising other bet segment? Why would they sell off Waymo when it's making this much progress? I have to believe that Gene's bullishness on Tesla, the fact that he is an investor in Tesla, he owns that stock, he wants it to be successful, and he talks very glowingly about Tesla's robo-taxi network, has to be impacting his comments on Google. Tesla is being priced as a $800 billion company in part because of the promise of a robo-taxi network. And right now, Waymo is currently building that out city by city. So no, I don't believe that right now is the time for Google to sell Waymo. Not right now when it's gaining steam, unlocking new territories, iterating on costs, and becoming more efficient. I think as a Tesla investor, you would like to advise Google to sell Waymo, because it might help out Tesla, but selling Waymo does not help Google. Now, as we look at Google overall as a business, the point that I can't emphasize enough is the growth of cloud. If we look back at the cloud business in Q1 of 2021, it made up around 7% of Google's total revenue. So it was a rather small portion of the business. Now, even though the other segments of Google's business are growing rather rapidly, most of them are growing around 14% or more, Google Cloud is growing even faster. So Google Cloud is making up a bigger and bigger percentage of the overall business over time. And in the most recent quarter, it makes up roughly 11% of their total revenue. And this trend will continue as Google Cloud is growing double to triple the speed of the rest of the business. It'll go from 7% to 11% of Google, upwards to 15% and then 20. The narrative will shift where Google Cloud is a major portion of this business. Mark Mahaney talks about the importance of cloud and why he's so bullish on it. Which should be a positive read through for AWS and from Microsoft too. Uh, cloud is an industry we think is accelerating kind of across the board for a variety of reasons, uh, one of which is uh, AI workloads, Gen AI workloads. He also mentions the strength in Google to be able to grow this business as much as they did, accelerating revenue growth while having a big jump in margins. And then the other thing I thought was impressive about the, the business kind of stood out with us was the mar were the margins. They had sort of warned us, told us that they were going to kind of step up headcount. 
uh, hiring in a September quarter, but the margins were essentially flattish. So I think that's a sign, but we'll, we want to get into it in the earnings call of newfound efficiencies and cost savings in the business model. And I think that there's probably a lot more if you get a new CFO or CFO there who really wants to dig into it. He mentions that more margin expansion is likely on the way with this new CFO. So overall, having Google trade up plus 5% on a day where the QQQ is in the red is a good start. It's in the right direction, but I still don't believe that this is enough. There's no guarantees, but I still believe that Google has a lot of room to run here. And I think the company's still worth well above $200. We'll see how things go over the upcoming months, but so far I'm excited about this new holding in the passive income account. Now, if you wanna see my coverage of the other companies reporting earnings after market close today, Microsoft, Meta, Starbucks, and Booking, make sure to subscribe to this channel and the Joseph Carlson After Hours channel. I'll have more content out this week. That's all for now. See you in the next one.